Hey Wargamers, welcome back to the channel Death From Above Wargaming. I'm Aaron and I am coming back with more Battlelytics action voted on by our patrons. So we've got a whole series of new and exciting mechs lined up for you. Uh, tonight though, we are going to start with the guillotine. So this is, um, <clears throat> this is a great mech, uh, 70 ton heavy uh, from a lore perspective. It was one of the Star League's premier heavy mechs for, um, for generations. Of course, in the Succession Wars, it took a little bit of a hit, um, but then it was revitalized again after the uh, the Helm Memory Core was discovered. So, uh, we are going to take a look at the Guillotine 5M, which is a refit, uh, and it is a great mech. Uh, speaking of great, also the Resculpt in Wave 2, absolutely phenomenal. I have one that actually on the painting bench right now that I'm painting up in, uh, in filthy Draconis Combine colors, so it should be good. But, guys, let's see how this mech stacks up. It's got a large laser, it's got a bunch of mediums, an SRM-6. This newer design does have case on it as well. So looking forward to seeing how this one stacks up. Stay tuned, it's coming right up. All right, guys, here we are, the Guillotine 5M. So this is a 70-ton heavy mech, and it's got a price tag of 1,472 battle value. Um, that's good. Uh, it's right in there with the Marauder, the Zeus, the Warhammer. You know, it's in that mid-13 to mid-1400 point range, maybe a little bit on the higher side, but this does pack um, jump jets, which always drive up the cost, and, of course, some advanced tech in the form of an ER large laser and case. Um, so speaking of the movement profile, looks like a grasshopper, uh, 464. It can dissipate, though, 25 points of heat per turn. That's really good. Um, this also has a standard fusion engine, um, standard armor, uh, and an endo steel structure. Uh, speaking of armor, it's got 12 tons, 192 pips, so that's definitely a healthy amount there uh, to keep this thing alive and chugging on the battlefield. Um, it does not have an arm, uh, an, I'm sorry, a lower arm actuator uh, on the left side. So that ER large can flip 360 degrees. That's important. Um, and then it has four medium lasers, two on the right arm and then one on each side torso. It has an SRM-6 in the center torso. That ammo is located on the right side and protected by case. Um, case is actually meaningful here because, again, does not have an XL engine. So if you do take an ammo hit on that side torso, it will actually keep the mech alive and in the fight. So very important there. Um, we talked about this in the intro. Again, this is a mainline heavy. This was produced in 3049, this particular variant. Um, so just before the clan invasion. So, uh, you know, excited to see how this one performs. So let's take a look at the offensive benchmarks. Okay, so 133.1 points of damage on the baseline. Uh, you know, it's not terrible. Again, you know, we're back in that 3050, you know, era post late succession wars, like Renaissance era mechs. Like that's not terrible for a 70 ton mech. Um, you can optimize this thing a little bit and you can get 140.1 points out of it. So the percent gain there is about 5%, 5.3%. Um, in terms of heat, even though this thing does have a substantial number of heat sinks, it also has a substantial number of energy weapons. Um, that ER large just eats up heat sinks. Um, and so when you're firing everything, when those medium lasers and that SRM-6 come into range, you can build up substantial amounts of heat pretty quickly. Um, but it does take you, uh, you know, quite a bit of time there to actually um, shut the mech down. But if you're not careful, you will overheat it. Although, you know, pretty careful modulation of, you know, firing two lasers in the SRM or three lasers or whatever, uh, whatever combination makes sense, you know, you can definitely keep the heat um, flat, which is good. So let's jump over to the lethality index. So this thing only managed to kill the javelin, um, you know, ab about 80% of the time, right? So about 20% of the time it was a no kill, which was surprising to me, um, but it does have you know, it doesn't really have high damage per hit, and it sort of has the SRM-6, which is a bit of a shotgun. 
So maybe, um, you know, maybe that's why I, I was, I, I was honestly expecting more out of this from a lethality perspective. You know, you think about four medium lasers on a mech, but um, at the same time that does spray around a little bit in classic. So damage per hit was 4.1. That makes sense. Critical hits above average, in my opinion, in the fives. And that's again, because it's got that shotgun effect with all those mediums and SRM sixes. Um, the time to kill on this thing was 11.28. So, you know, just out of the gate, what I'm seeing is it does respectable damage, um, but it's not, uh, you know, it's not an assassin style mech. It's not going to go in and, you know, pick a one-on-one -on -one fight and kill something. Um, but this thing will definitely lay down some hurt. I think you just need to go after mechs that are already wounded. Um, so I'm already thinking about, you know, how I would lance this thing up, if you will, you know, with mechs like the awesome or things that have big caliber weapons, Gauss rifles, AC-10s, AC-20s, right and let this thing kind of clean up the trash. All right, let's take a look at the defensive benchmarks, see how this thing does in terms of survivability. All right, so we'll start with the, the armor diagnostic. So the first thing I see here is it's over armor on the rear torso. Again, for a mech that moves like it does, it has jump jets, yeah, things might get in your rear arc because this is probably more of a brawling platform, but I don't think you need to put that much armor on the rear. Um, I would keep it, you know, at spec, not over. I would peel those points off and put them on the center. I think that's better served there. Um, legs are under spec. I think that's fine. Legs are a weird thing. I mean, they can hold as much armor as a side torso, but statistically you're going to hit them less. So I don't think it's really an issue. Um, and that's echoed in the mobility analysis. This thing really only sees a mode of hit 3.4% of the time. Uh, your average target mod in 10,000 simulations is 1.96. Your maximum is 2. So this thing's really doing fine in terms of, of the legs. The other important thing is the legs are packed out with jump jets, right? So you you know if you get into the legs, you may not hit an actuator. You could knock out a jump jet anyway. Let's take a look at survivability. That's what I'm really interested in. 84.6%. So that's not bad. Um, you know, I think anything, you know, 90 and above is really good. 84.6% isn't bad. Breaking it down, it's pretty interesting. You know, no ammo deaths as expected, right? If that ammo is popped on the right side, it is being protected by case. Engine deaths are almost a non-factor, 1.9%. And that's because if you're getting into that center torso, you're going to kill it that way. So 13.4% of the deaths come from, you know, center torso deaths. If you look at the survivability curve and you look at the deaths over time, that's that center bar graph and the white line right overlaid, you know, you'll notice sort of how rapidly those, those center torso deaths climb. Um... So I think early game, this thing does really well. You know, late game, this thing, obviously, you know, once it's worn out, it, it's going to die pretty quick. Um, and I would imagine this is very like Black Knight-esque where the thing is just, you know, arms and, and you know, arms blown off, side torsos blown off. It's just sort of like a walking CT, um, you know, but overall, I think I think survivability is really good. I mean, that's the moral of the story. It's got good armor coverage. It's got good speed. And I think for a 70 ton mech, you know, of this era, 84.6 uh, is, is pretty solid. So damage was OK. Survivability was pretty good. Um, let's take a look at the efficiency and see where it all shakes out. All right. So here it is. Let's just dive right in. The efficiency rating is 6.29. That's pretty much where I expected this thing to be. It's not too expensive. Uh, it's not real cheap. It doesn't do a ton of damage, but it does enough. It's not outstanding in terms of survivability, but it's not bad, right? And so it's just slightly above average on that efficiency bell curve. Um, and I think that's a good thing. I think that's a solid mech design. So let's dive into the numbers a little bit deeper. Um, again, we talked about survivability uh, enough, 84.6% there. Um, let's talk about the, the damage loss, right? So from its optimized ACD to its effective ACD, it's a damage loss of 7.4%. That's not bad. Um, and that's because most of the, um, the, the deaths come very late in the game. So you can see that survivability curve, you know, it holds pretty strong, you know, for the first eight-ish turns, and then it starts to kind of dip off 
um, and late game you can see it you know is, is where it takes the biggest inflection down um, so you're not losing a ton of damage over the course of the game um, but this is probably not going to be one of the mechs left standing unless your opponent chooses to ignore it gunnery sensitivity was a 0.5 um, so what does that mean that means that you're not going to see massive you know return on you know upgunning this thing with a better pilot um, at Gunnery 3, it was a 5.63 efficiency, so still above average. At Gunnery 1, it's a 6.6-ish. Like, uh, to me, I'm playing Gunnery 3, maybe Gunnery 2 in this mech, but, you know, honestly, I think I would put a, a G3 pilot. Here's why. Most of the weaponry is, you know, 9 hex, right? Medium lasers, SRM-6, that's the bulk of your damage. Your ER large is really just something you're going to use as you close. So having a great gunner in there, I mean, yeah, you'll get a couple of extra hits at the back end, but go back to that type, that top right-hand chart, excuse me, you'll see there's a very, very slim amount of damage being done prior to those medium lasers and SRM-6 is coming into play. So investing in, you know, a gunnery two pilot, yeah, you'll get some extra damage tacked in the back end, but realistically, you're already closing, right? You're going to be closer. You know, the difference between, you know, medium range and long range is, is only three hexes for, you know, medium lasers and SRM. So I think you can get the gap closed pretty quickly. I think you can see the ROI for a Gunnery 3 pilot. Um, and I think that's evidenced here. You're not really seeing a huge return um, from Gunnery 3 to Gunnery 2. Anyway, enough about that. So overall, you know, I think it's a solid mech. I think, you know, it's a good bang for buck, you know, a good, solid performer. It's not outstanding, um, but, you know, again, this is a mech I would definitely take. Um, now, how I would play it is a different story. Let's take a look and talk about that. So I wish this thing had, like, an LRM-10 instead of the SRM-6, because then I would consider playing this in, like, a second-line role, where you can sort of slow play getting in close. You can fire some long-range missiles, fire that ER large, and then close in, you know, with those four medium lasers. Um, but with just the ER large, I, I I can't in good conscience like play it in a second line role. Um, I think you're just you're wasting. So uh, where I play this thing is twofold. One is a brawler, um, and one in a vanguard role. So I think you know the brawler role is important um, and and something you want to do if it's not the biggest mech in the lance. If you have other mechs that you can stick out front to absorb fire early, that way the guillotine, guillotine, however you want to say, it's actually guillotine. If you want to get in close with the guillotine, um, you can, right? Because you're, you're, you know, the, the enemy's probably focusing on that bigger, meaner mech, you know, a stalker or, you know, a king crab or like whatever fire magnets, you know, you can put on the table um, and then let this thing sort of skirt in unnoticed. If it can get in close range, this thing will do damage, and you will get an ROI on it. Um, if it's if it's the biggest mech in the lance, um, I think you can play it in that vanguard role. I think it can absorb fire from lighter mechs. You know, taking an AC five from a Wolverine or a PPC, you know, shot from a Griffin, like it'll sustain some of that lighter fire. But if you put it up against bigger assault mechs, um, it, it will. I think what will happen is it will take too much damage early on. You'll see it, you know, pretty much dead before it can get, you know, all of its, uh, you know, short range weaponry into play long enough to sort of get that that return back on the BV investment. All right, a couple of things here. Again, threat assessment. So look at the damage jump in Alpha Strike from 10 inches to 9 inches, right? Or 10 hexes to 9 hexes, whichever you prefer. It's astronomical. I mean, it's like a 4x uh, multiplier you know, going from, you know, that, that ER large, you know, up to the, to the alpha strike, the peak alpha strike of 40. Um, it's impressive. Obviously this mech does better, the closer you get, it is geared out for short range weaponry. Um, if you get into three inches and you fire everything, you have a peak alpha strike potential again of 40, your average damage is going to be 30. And that factors in, you know, missile cluster hits, the probability to hit with the laser, so on and so forth. Um, and, you know, so again, your, your ACD cap there, you know, 40, 30 divided by 40, 75%. That's not bad. Um, every alpha strike builds up four points of heat. So you can realistically get away, in my opinion, alpha striking twice, 
um, and then sort of backing off on the heat. You will take a gunnery penalty on that third turn, uh, but that's okay. Uh, maybe you decide to stand still and you're not walking and you only build up seven points of heat. You know, that would be ideal. But realistically, I would not alpha strike until you're within six inches. Um, and that's important because there's a, you know, there's a definite jump there. That's when all of your weapons are now at medium range. And that plus four to plus two modifier is enormous. Um, and so, you know, that's what I would do. I would, you know, basically be um, careful, you know, use that ER large laser. When you get into nine inches, add in a couple medium lasers or maybe that SRM six, uh, if your dice are hot. You know, and then when you get into six inches, I would alpha strike, alpha strike, you know, maybe throttle back a little bit, bleed off a point or two, you know, alpha strike again. Hopefully you finished off your target. Um, so that's the guillotine in a nutshell. That's how I would play it. Again, one important thing to remember that ER large, uh, that thing is on a, you know, basically a turret. You can, there's no lower arm actuator. You can rotate that thing 360 degrees um, and shoot behind you, which is, uh, which is useful. Again, another reason I'm not really sure why there's so much rear armor on this mech. If I was going to mod this mech, there'd be a few things I think I would do. I do think I would swap, and it does dramatically change the mech, but I would swap the SRM pack for an LRM. Um, I think I would get rid of the the ER large. I'm not sure. Uh, maybe look at a PPC. I'm not. I'm not sure if that if that would be a good thing to do or not. Um, but I would definitely you know move that armor around. I would peel a little bit off the rear, put a little bit on the front. Um, but largely, even if you're playing mechs out of the box, you're not into customizing, I think the 5M is a good bet, um, especially if you're rolling on those random tables, you know, you can get, uh, you can get good, um, you know, good mileage out of this thing. Just buddy it up with some mechs that have big punch weapons, again, like those awesomes, or, you know, the King Crabs, uh, you know, or even the Atlas, like things like that that could just blow holes in mechs. And this guy can come in and really finish them off with a couple of big alpha strikes at, at medium range. Um, you know, that six hex, six inch range. I think it'll do well for you. Um, all right, that's it, guys. I'm done with the guillotine. I hope you enjoyed this review. Very cool mech. Definitely, uh, if you don't have one, you should get your hands on it. Those uh, those Comstar packs are, have some really, really great new designs in them. Um, speaking of buying things, guys, head on over to Aries Games and Minis. Aries Games and Minis has everything you want. Um, it's got, you know, the minis, the books, the dice, Paints, Hardware Studios, Terrain, um, STL, um, I actually, not the STL, it's got the actual physical prints for um, for the aerospace fighters uh, that I showed you a little while back. So they got all the, all the stuff, all the things there. Um, also, subscribe, like, leave a comment, subscribe again. Uh, definitely don't forget to subscribe. And if you want to get more active and involved in the community, or if you just want to help out the channel, you can head on over to Patreon and join us there. Uh, it's as little as a dollar a month. Uh, helps out the channel. You know, gets new cameras, new hardware for, you know, doing all the video editing, all that cool stuff. Um, new supercomputer for Battleetics, if you will. Um, but other than that, guys, I'm done marketing. Uh, and I hope, again, that you enjoyed this review. Lots more coming. So, of course, stay tuned. As I always have exciting things coming from Death From Above Wargaming. Have a great night. Thank you.